In the previous video, we learned a little about technology and technological devices. Now we're going to talk about the evolution of technology and the main factors that influence it. What factors influence technological evolution? As time goes by, new technological devices appear, which previously would have seemed like science fiction. Not only do new devices appear, but those that already exist are constantly being improved. For example, if you compare the prehistoric wheel and the modern wheel, you will find huge differences. Yet these vast differences are the result of many small improvements. Here's another example. Technological evolution allowed us to go from this to this. The vacuum cleaner allows us to clean the floor of our houses faster and easier without having to use the dustpan and raising dust that will later accumulate on the furniture. These are the main factors that influence the evolution of technology. Scientific knowledge. Science and technology always go hand in hand. Scientific discoveries allow us to develop new objects and improve upon those that already exist. For example, before a motor for this vacuum cleaner could be built, scientists had to first explain electromagnetic phenomena. Without this knowledge, engineers would not have been able to develop electrical machines. In order for technology to evolve, it is also necessary to have the appropriate materials. The development of new materials is one of the disciplines most closely connected to the evolution of technology. Each new material provides new properties, which give new possibilities for the improvement of technological objects. Clearly, without plastic, we could not make the vacuum cleaner in our example. Plastic is an inexpensive, light, durable, and easy to mold material. But plastic is not something that we find in nature. In other words, to make a vacuum cleaner, we first had to invent plastic, and that alone was a very important advancement. Another example is semiconductor materials, the diodes and transistors that regulate the electronic operation of the vacuum cleaner are made up of materials that were not discovered until the 19th century. In addition to new materials, we also need new tools to facilitate certain tasks. These tools can range from giant machines, like a tunnel boring machine, to a simple pulley. To build the vacuum cleaner, we have to join the pieces with screws, which means we're going to need a screwdriver. We also need tin soldering irons for the electronic circuits and special machines for molding the plastic. If we were making a broom instead, we would need different, much simpler tools. Production processes and task organization have also evolved over the years. Methods of production and the organization of work are important aspects. Over time, demand for artisan work and crafts has been decreasing. Today, practically all manufacturing is done in factories on a mass scale, and this has resulted in profound changes to working methods. Factories are organized around assembly lines, where each operator performs very specific and repetitive tasks in order to increase productivity. And as technological objects become more complex, Highly specialized personnel are needed for each stage of manufacturing. All of this together, from assembly lines to the specialization of each operator, from simple operations to the most complex ones, allows increasingly complex objects to be manufactured at lower costs. This broom could be made by a single person with artisanal methods. Why? Because the process requires only simple actions, such as cutting the branch of a tree, carving it into a bar, harvesting the millet for the bristles, 
sewing it into a bundle, and joining it to the handle with a wire. Simple actions that do not require a high degree of specialization, except the manufacturing of the wire. On the contrary, manufacturing a vacuum cleaner requires much more complex activities, such as the manufacture of plastic parts, the manufacture of an electric motor, or the manufacture of an electronic circuit. These activities require highly specialized engineers and workers. Moving from individual artisan work to collective work on an assembly line, in which different people with a high degree of specialization work together, leads us to the next point. Today, you cannot have an understanding of technological evolution without talking about computers and robotics. Computer science and robotics, together with artificial intelligence, are part of a new industrial revolution, a revolution that has only just begun. In the previous point, we said that modern production methods require highly specialized people, but they also demand extreme precision. A robot is always going to be more precise and more efficient than a human. And in general terms, a robot can also be more productive and economical. These days, very little work is done by the artisan method. Most production occurs in factories and is carried out along assembly lines which are increasingly automated. Finally, we have the economy. The economy is very important in almost all aspects of our life and also in the evolution of technology. Even if we have the necessary scientific knowledge, materials, tools, and adequate working methods, but we live in a society as poor as William Kumquamba's, where even electric light is a luxury that few can afford, then the vacuum cleaner would not exist. Because, as a general rule, only those products that are economically viable, which is to say profitable, are developed. Here's another example. This type of technological device exists simply because people pay money to ride it. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist, and we can apply this same idea to any other object. Today, the car is part of our day-to-day -day lives. The car has impacted the design of cities and our way of life. But in the beginning, it was a luxury item. It was so expensive that very few people could afford to own a car. The real success of the car was not only because of the speed and comfort it brought to travel, but also due to the fact that Henry Ford managed to lower production costs enough to fit the price of a car into the average person's budget. Think for a second, why don't we all have a luxury mega yacht? Because it's just too expensive. New scientific knowledge, new materials, and new tools, including computers and robotics, allowed for the development of the mechanical part of the vehicle. But if its price had continued to be extremely high, today, instead of cars, we might still be traveling by horse and buggy. And the streets might not be quite as clean. In fact, at the end of the 19th century, one of the arguments for replacing the horse and buggy with automobiles was that it would get rid of the huge amount of horse poop in the city streets, making cities more comfortable, less polluted places to live and work. The first electric cars were built in the 1830s, yet they disappeared from the market for almost 200 years. What factors do you think influenced the technological evolution of the electric car and ultimately made it possible to see electric cars driving on the road today? <laughs>